Hey folks, in this section we're going to be working on this hair lock swirly object. Let's just deep uh, what I mean. Look at this. We're going to be trying to recreate something like this hopefully and uh, as you can see it's uh, you can see it's throughout the render and the only place that you can see it is this final the camera so as you can see have it all the way through so let's try and uh, sort of recreate something similar and see what we can do with the uh, with this so let's uh, get started uh, actually the first thing I'm gonna do in this lesson uh, if I go to the let me just disable this uh, main cloner so we really if you go to the app uh, and see take a look at this cloner you can see there is just repetitive patterns that go through all the way uh, and this is not very nice that's because our cord cloner here this cloner uh, type is set to iterate so it uh, iterates through all the elements uh, underneath it that's why we are just change this uh, cloner type to random and you get this nice randomness and uh, this is definitely much more better and just uh, let's set up our uh, uh, hair like swirly object. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, control C and copy this chord cloner and uh, create a new scene and hit control and V. Uh, it's gonna ask us if we want to uh, copy those textures. No, just we don't need to see them. Change the display to uh, grow shading lines or even just a quick shading will be enough and uh, okay so they are pure black but i don't think it matters that much really we can simply even though go and delete this uh guys here because we don't need them now uh what i'm going to do is start working on that the first thing i'm going to do is to kind of create a spline around it uh, I'm going to just use a simple uh, cubic spline and let's start creating some nice spline here. And uh, let's start from these points maybe and just make sure you are in the uh, cubic sort of spline and add the some sort of variation maybe and uh, just close the spline here. Let's go to our point level and adjust some of these points. It really uh, is up to you working on this point and just try to have some nice stuff. I think this is too heavy here. And I'm just going to make this something like this. Select this guy here. So something like this very simple it doesn't have to be complicated at all because uh, there we go let's maybe make something like this okay so this is nice and the next thing I'm gonna do is to uh, create a simple polygon object which is here and uh, we have our spline so I can delete this uh, chord cloner safely go to your polygon change the, its orientation to plus Z or minus C doesn't matter really hit C to convert it to an editable poly and uh, right click and choose your knife tool and let's just uh, cut through these objects and uh, create some sorry we kind of made a mistake here okay just if you want you can go to this uh, top view and really I'm going to just randomly cut through to get uh, different vertices and and something. Okay, I think we have quite enough here. And if we want, we can cut through these parts that we think don't have enough lines. Maybe, maybe this guy's, this guy's, this guy's guys okay that's good now the next thing I want to do actually let's uh, go get rid of this grid quickly 
I'm going to go to this polygon and create a null or just hold down alt and click on the null so the null will be automatically the parent of our polygon. I'm going to apply a align to spline tag to my null and uh, define this spline and make sure the um, tangential is uh, selected. Now you can simply uh, go through and animate this thing here. Okay, now uh, we have this and you can simply animate this uh, position while you uh, let's go to I actually want this if you uh, get back to our uh, other scene that we have here and uh, I want this uh, sort of movement to be uh, present in my scene from the uh, frame zero so this is very important that's why uh, what I want to do is to make sure I have this I have some negative values here let's put something like negative 100 and start our uh, motion from there and uh, let's just get started and in frame negative 100 control click on a position while you and um, also how many frame is there until they we got about something like 600 frames so get back to here and add this value also 600 frames okay now position value and let's go to something like 150 frames frame 100 here and let's change this guy to 100 and control click and now you have this uh, simple motion that's going on what I want to do first of all actually to make this poly a bit smaller so something like 50% even though if it's bigger it's something like 70% I think it's enough and now if I hit play this is what we're gonna have okay uh, one important thing as you can see it sort of speeds up and slowdowns as uh, it's in different parts of the spline just make sure your spline type is set to uh, uniform and if you just let's add something like 10 here and see if it solves part of our problems yeah and the next thing you're gonna have to do uh, actually is work on this plane a bit and let's just uh, work on this uh, points and sort of change them move them down or up just a bit so they are kind of different height so you have different motions okay something like this I think it's enough and uh, now you get this sort of motion uh, the problem is uh, in frame 100 when the position while you get to 100 uh, our polygon stops uh, the solution for this is very simple uh, you just uh, go right click on this guy go to animation and show F curve uh, and sorry you should be able to do that let's select this thing animation uh, show F curves there we go now uh, select the thing and hit L if you select the uh, both of the uh, points and hit L it will make it a linear uh, line so as you can see the polygon won't gradually speeds up and uh, comes down it just have an instant speed all the way through uh, the constant speed all the way through which is uh, great and the next thing I'm gonna do is to uh, select this track and uh, change the track after uh, if you select this track here now you can change the track after to offset repeat and as you can see it will give you a line here you just need to change the repetitions a bit more so it goes all the way through let's go just 10 so we are safe so there we go now as you can see our uh, movement is there all the way through and that is so great mm, so let's see what's no 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 the uh we uh sort of made a mistake let's go to our animation uh 
track, show F curve here, and select this track. And instead of this, just go to the repeat. And this should, should make, yeah. If I hit play right now, you can see our polygons will be constantly moving throughout our scene without stopping. And there we go. This is this king here in our um, spline. I'm just going to actually delete this point and also delete this point. And up here, let's go to something like this. And as you can see, it um, won't stop moving at all, which is quite great. Now, the next thing we are going to uh, need to do is to select this polygon and go to your MoGraph uh, Tracer. And now uh, this uh, polygon has been added to our Tracer and our Tracer should now trace the points and vertices on our polygon. And hopefully if I get back and hit play, this is what you're going to be seeing in the scene. Uh, the motion is so boring right now, so uh, let me just get back and uh, disable this tracer for now. I'm going to select my polygon. So the reason that I added this uh, align to spline uh, to the null, not directly to the polygon, uh, because when you add a align spline tag to an object, you basically don't have access to its rotation values. So you cannot change this rotation value. And if we change it, if we select the null here, you can see the rotation values right now are being controlled automatically by this tag. Uh, but when you apply this tag to the parent object, you still have control over the rotation of the child and you can simply change this. And I want to just add some uh, rotation movement to the uh, banking axis. So let's just uh, go and all the way through. Let's go to something like uh, 720 degrees so two so two full rotation uh, if it is enough or not I think we it's really not enough so let me uh, select this value and let's go to something like one let's hit play Okay, that's good. The only thing we just uh, need to make sure that this value is also in a constant movement and it doesn't have this uh, gradual uh, change of speed. So let's just hit the L and also select the track. We don't need to uh, repeat or anything because it's just uh, the keyframe is in the final point. There we go. There we go. That's not too bad. Now I can... Uh, my tracer let's actually save this object so and let's uh, save this as the uh, hair like object scene uh, okay now let's enable our tracer frame zero and there we go now at frame zero we have a lot of movement which is great and uh, just go to your tracer object, make sure the limit is set to from the end, and let's go to something like uh, uh, I don't know, 75 frames and see what we're gonna have. Hit play. That's very nice. So uh, I think we are in a good position. The next lesson, we're going to actually create the material for this tracer object and add it to our main scene.